All right, now I'll explain how to pair the edges. This is my favorite step. Um, it takes the longest, but I kind of like it because I have a lot of freedom with um, how you move the pieces. And I'll explain that more in a second. So what you're trying to do basically is just line up two pieces across from each other. Like this blue and white and this blue and white. It's such that we can break the centers temporarily and make a pair. Then we just ditch the pair out of the way and bring this back. So that we restore all our centers and we get a pair out of the deal. So, I'll show you one more example of that. Uh, this blue and red, and this blue and red can match them. Get this out of the way and bring this back. Now we got lucky and got an extra pair there, but that doesn't really matter yet. Um, okay, so I said that you have a lot of freedom with how you move the pieces, and that's actually very important. When I learned how to do a 4x4 with the edge pairing, I was made to understand that you had to be very careful with how you move the pieces. That's not true. There's nothing you can do by moving the outside layers that will break anything you have. It's impossible to break um, pairs or centers by moving outside layers. So, like say I have this um, orange and white and this orange and white. There's a hundred different ways I can get this, uh, I can line them up properly. That's probably the easiest, but no way is wrong. It's just get them how, get them lined up however you like, and that's, that's the deal. Now that you know the basics, I'll teach you something a little bit more advanced. So we're gonna build a pair, so we're always gonna try to ditch this for something that isn't a pair, like this. So bring that in, and then, you know, bring it back. But, you notice how we always bring a piece back, and we know what piece it is, so it's, um, blue and orange in this case. If we were to have replaced, um, this with a blue and orange piece, we would have got another pair. So just a little bit more, kind of look ahead, and it'll really pay off. I'll show you exactly what I mean on this case here. We have, uh, white and red and white and red here. They're ready to pair and I know that I'm gonna move this um, red and green piece out of the way. So I have this red and green piece here. I know where it is. I can move this out of the way and replace this with uh, this red and green piece. And then move them back. And that got me not only the pair on the top, this one, but it also got me this one. So that's a really easy way to get two pairs at once. This method is called 2-gen, and I learned it from Thrust. Okay. A couple more examples here. Uh, green and yellow. Green and yellow. Yellow and orange. Now usually I'll just, I'll just find the edge and move it up top here so that I know exactly where it is. You don't have to, but it's just a preference thing for me. Okay, so... I can see that this is going to solve itself naturally because there's three partial edges. And I'll, sh I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second. All the edges are paired up except these three. So I'm going to I'm gonna move this piece to here, and then I have the green and orange one here. And it'll solve. Anytime you have three edges left, it'll solve itself. Sometimes though, you'll have a special case. Which is not really, I don't, I don't really consider it a special case, it's kind of, the algorithm is actually really intuitive when you get used to it. Okay, so sometimes you'll be left with two edges instead. And it'll be kind of, kind of awkward to solve, because you'll line them up so that like, blue and orange goes to blue and orange or whatever. And you'll match them, but everything else is paired up. There's nothing you can move into the spot to, you know, get this out of the way. And, you know, same thing with this way. You can't do that either because there's nothing to move into the spot. And you certainly can't move this green and orange, uh, this green and orange piece into here because that'll wreck um, this blue and white. So, what you have to do in this case is just flip one of these pieces around so that rather than having them lined up diagonally, we have them lined up straight across. 
So we have blue and orange straight across from blue and orange, and green and orange straight across from green and orange. And we do this algorithm. D, or lowercase d, R, F prime, U, R prime, F, lowercase d prime. And that'll just uh, swap them so that it matches the ones that were across from each other. Okay, so at this point we're ready to finish the solve, and this is just a really simple thing. By turning the outside, uh, by turning the outside layers, we can pretend it's a three by three, and um, solve it as such. Okay. So there's two different types of parity, and each one has a 50/50 chance of popping up. So you're usually going to get at least one parity. Uh, but I'm not gonna lie to you, you're usually gonna get both, so. It's just, cause... Odds are always against you when you're trying to speed solve. Okay, so, I see automatically that I have orientation parity here. I can tell because this is a situation which is not possible on a 3x3, um, such that one edge is flipped. And, again, that's not possible on a 3x3, but it is possible on a 4x4, and the reason that it's possible on a 4x4 is because since we we decide where to build our centers and edge pairs, it's kind of like you know when you put a when you put a three by three together, but you don't put it together solved, and then you try to solve it and you can't. It's kind of like that. But in this case, we we can use an algorithm to fix this, and not surprisingly, it breaks up the middle layers and puts them back in a different spot. Okay, so here's the algorithm, and this is a very long algorithm, and this is probably the longest algorithm you'll have to ever learn. So, uh, you know, just learn it. There's no way around it. You're going to have to learn this. Sorry. R2, B2, U2, L, U2, R prime, U2, R, U2, F2, R, F2, L prime, B2, R2. So that's, I don't know, it's, it's really long, you're going to have to learn it. I learned it sitting in a hospital waiting room for a couple hours. The sooner you learn it, the less annoying it'll be though. So, um, yes indeed, now I can just finish the OLL. And see if I can do the PLL. Okay, so suppose it, it does have a permutation parity. Now I, I just applied a parity to this, so. It'll be a PLL that you've never seen before. Like this, uh, this is an impossible case, and um, you know if you don't know all your PLLs, you know just use your two-step or whatever, whatever it is you use. Um, so I'm just gonna use my two-step here, and you'll end up with a goofy case looking like this, where we have two edges that are switched. Now, anytime you have this situation, two edges or two corners, or you know any any PLL is not possible. You're going to use this very simple algorithm here. It's kind of similar to the H permutation on our, on our 3 by 3 It's going to be a, a lowercase r2, u2, lowercase r2, lowercase u2, u2, lowercase r2, lowercase u2. And what that does, it switches these, um, these front and back edges with one another. And then that that kind of fixed it into a just normal clockwise edge switcher. So you know I'll just finish it off. So I think that this book covers everything. That covers parity, edge pairing, and all that other stuff. I hope you enjoyed. So that's just about it for the explanation of, you know, solving a four by four. As a little bit of an added bonus, I've thrown in a part three to this video which explains just how to disassemble and reassemble both the Rubik's and Ishin brand of the 4x4. So that should be very helpful. Um, my next video is coming out soon. You can help me out by commenting and rating on this video and my other videos as well. And um, that's just about it, guys. I will talk to you later. Take it easy.